It gives me great pleasure to introduce our next speaker. This year, we have three abstract winners, and they will be giving a presentation of their work. Introducing Dr. Nan, who is a research fellow with the Systems Medicine and Bioengineering Department here at the Houston Methodist Cancer Center Research Institute. She's going to talk about their research regarding systematic characterization of ovarian cancer-derived exosomes unveiling RNAs interfering with CD8 T cell activation. Dr. Nan. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Xiang Nan from uh, Houston, uh, from System Medicine and Bioengineering. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to share our work with you today. And uh, uh, the work was systematic characterization of ovarian cancer-derived exosomes unveil miRNAs interfering with CD8 T cells. Uh, the high-grade series ovarian cancer is a very little, uh, you know, advanced cancer and causes more than 13,000 deaths annually uh, in the United States. And the current treatment for this cancer have limited results in the kind of advanced cancers. And as we know, CD8 CD8, CD8 positive tumor infiltrating lymphocytes has been widely reported to correlate with the cancer patient survival, and including this ovarian cancer. But even with the presence of the tails, immune therapy, immune, uh, the immune therapy has a limited success in the cold tumor. Understanding the interaction between the CD8 T cells and the tumor microenvironment is very important, since the, import, the microenvironment in the tumor and organs, you know, as we know, it's very complicated. It's, uh, it's ranging you know, from the signaling molecules to network pathways, and from the subcellular components to the cells of the tumor microenvironment and the organ system, all of them tangled together. So we need um, to generate a systematic method to guide our studies. And uh, among all those factors I just mentioned above, and, uh, our previous findings support uh, uh, and our previous findings that that's found that the tumor derived exosomes can affect CD8 T cell activation well mRNAs. That's why we have a hypothesis here, and the hypothesis is the specific mRNAs within the tumor derived exosomes can affect CD8 T cell activation, and in turn it will correlate with the Hg SOC patient survival. And uh, there is a paper that published in 2017, uh, uh, 17, and uh, they included more than 3,000 patient samples uh, to, uh, to stay with the traditional IHC staining, focusing on the CD8 tails and the survival time. Uh, they have a correlation. They found out that CD8 tumor infiltrating lymphocytes correlate with the patient survival over there. And uh, uh, just uh, as this figure showed, in their study, they, cut, they, catalog, <coughs> they, they catalog the patients into four different groups for the high, uh, based on the T cell density. It's high, moderate, low, and negative. And we can see that um, the survival rate increase when there is more tails in that. And uh, also reveals that even in a cold tumor like brain cancer, eight. 80% of the patients have positive CD8 positive tails, but the response to the immune therapy remains low. And this indicates that there is an immune suppression microenvironment inside the tumor. And uh, about this uh, study, one concern is that they use a traditional pathology method to just uh, focusing on the CD8 T cells. And, uh, but we know that in microenvironment, in the tumor microenvironment, there's a lot of more cell types involved in. So is the CD8 still going to be the most significant one, uh, which correlates the survival if we you know, do a comp more comprehensive study of that? That's why we conduct the imaging mass cytometry, MC analysis. And uh, this is a more <clears throat> comprehensive method that can validate the conclusion just previously we mentioned. And uh, we, here we include 48 ovarian cancer patient samples here stained with 21 iron labeled antibodies and generated high dimensional imaging and a dude analysis. And uh, finally, we got a, cell, a correlation uh, of different cell types and the survival time. 
And uh, here is the uh, workflow for this one. And after this study, we found out that even with multiple cell types, CD8 T cells still the most, uh, you know, the most uh, significant cell population that are associated with patient survival. And uh, here is the study of uh, cell density. We can see it's just a representative image. We can see that obviously we have a lower cell, uh, CD8 T cell density in the short-term survivors. And uh, here is the um, long-term survivors. And not only the density indicates the results, but also we also count the total cell counts in tumor regions. We found that the, in the long-term survivors, we also have a higher, higher count of the CD80 cells. And for, then we do a staining. Then we do a staining staining strategy, we can see this is the co-stain of the carotene 8 and the CD8 uh, and a grand MB. And for the short-term survivors, we don't see any co-staining you know, staining over the here, co-present of the antibodies. But for the long-term survival, look at the uh, white arrows here. It indicates that, that uh, uh, confirm activated CD8 T cell associated with the patient survival. Thus, we decide to use interferon gamma protection in the following screening strategy to see how the cells uh, are activated. And before we go forward, we just uh, here I just uh, love to have a brief introduction of the exosomes. And uh, <clears throat> we can see here the exosomes are it's a kind of membrane vehicles secreted by many cells, including the tumor cell. And, uh, and uh, this, uh, and this, and uh, this, yeah, and uh, this, uh, this one is the, um, a typical structure of the exosomes. It's a phospholipid bilayer. It has protein, DNA, RNA packed inside, and uh, the size is from 30 to 150 nanometers. And, uh, <clears throat> The exosomes from the donor, from the donor cells, can transport and deliver large large cargoes to the recipient cells, and uh, and further release the uh, R DNA, RAL protein, whatever in that, and uh, in the recipient T cells, and the result in modifying the cell recipient cell uh, phenotypes. And uh, here in our case is that they specific mRNA contained within this exosome can modulate the inhibition of CD8 T cell activation. And here is the tumor-derived exosome inhibition CD8 uh, activation screening. This is our screening strategy. We can see we uh, co-incubated co co uh, co the, the exosomes, the activator, and the CD8 T cell together uh, for 72 hours and do the ELISA test to see the interferon gamma expression level change. And for this screening, we just want to find a candidate which can have a consistent effect on the CD8 T cell activation. And here is the nine exosomes that we are using in this study. And this is the nanocyte uh, quantification results. Well, after we run this screening across multiple donors, that we find out this, uh, the exosome derived from P01 and OVCA432 have consistent polarized effect on the CD8 T cells. We can see this is the interferon gamma expression change percentage. One, uh, the PEO1 is always below the baseline, and the uh, OVC 432 is always above the baseline. For, for in this case, we just uh, <clears throat> compare the MI profiling data of this two, and we find finally can narrow it down to 56 microRNAs. And uh, we find it, and uh, finally we find out just the 13 out of 13 out of this 56 has been reported, and uh, they have uh, like 210 targets mRNA in the recipient cells. And uh, here we can see the list of the table is the 13 microRNAs we are we we find here. If we will look at their targets, we will find 12 out of this 13 have targets related to the immune signaling pathway or to the um, cell cycle pathway. 
And we found one from this one. We found it uh, particularly interesting. It's because for the MI1, MIR181A is the only one which can overlap from our list and overlap with the list of our collaborators uh, gen uh, collaborators, which they generated like uh, a list, a, a miRNA signature list, which uh, generated from the micro dissection uh, data, and uh, not only this one, and uh, not only th this, it is the only overlap one, but also we found out it's another miRNA, mir181c. It's the same family with this one, has been reported to have an increased production in HGSOC cells and an increased exome transfer to T cells, and which it leads to a lower interfering gamma production. And uh, since they are, uh, they, they are the same family, so I get, we guess they, um, they might be, have the same function as well. Um, we're still working on the microRNA list over there, and uh, but this one seems a good candidate to chase in future. And uh, speaking of the target mRNAs, we also do a pathway analysis of the uh, target mRNA, and we can see top 20 among the top 20 pathways. Um, most of them are immune-related or cell cycle-related. Uh, the results of this pathway analysis just greatly support the screening, re, re, uh, screening results we, we just uh, uh, produced. And here is our ongoing work. Our uh, ongoing work includes co-efforts of the dry lab and wet lab, and we will generate more gen genetic data from the recipient T cells and uh, um, we also want to combine with uh, public multi-omics data and uh, clinical data to guide well lab experiments. We hope to narrow it down to a particular MRA or a particular list of MRA or pathway related to the CD8 T cell activation inhibition. And then we plan to you know, validate the in vitro and in, in vivo animal studies. And uh, here's a summary. Uh, first, we generate a um, build up a novel analyst and a modeling pipeline for MC images. MC image is a new technology. The pipeline, uh, Ying, has done a lot of efforts. Thank you for her uh, fundamental work here. And uh, then, <clears throat> and then uh, they find a. a of, uh, during the MC <laughs> analysis, they find out the site uh, so cytotoxic CD8 T cell population is still the most significant population sub subtypes that correlates, correlated with the survival. And then the exome derived uh, uh, exome screening strategy, just, uh, screening results just reveal the exome from PO1 and OVC432 has, uh, has consistent polarized result, uh, efforts on the CD8 T cell activation. And compare the mRNA profile between these two reveals 13 miRNA candidates, which targets 210 mRNAs. And the pathway analysis of the target mRNA support the screening results as well. And our further work is to use systematic biological methods to predict the promising signaling pathway, which can interfere with CD8 cell activation. And, uh, Following with the well lab validation, including virtual and available study to proceed the mechanism research as well. And I uh, last, I would like to thank you, my uh, <laughs> thank you, my lab, thank you, my boss, Dr. Dr. Wang. Uh, thank you for her guide, for his <laughs> guidance and encouragement in this work. And uh, thank you for our collaborator, Dr. Sam Mok. And uh, also thank you for the um, lab member. Jian Ting Ying and Xin and uh, uh, Shan and also our collaborator from um, MD Anson, Sam, Dr. Sammy and uh, So. And also thank you for the funding support as well. And as a last, I would like to thank you. Thank you for your time and attention. Thanks.